we are making soy braised short ribs. Uh, I've got this Dutch oven heated up. I'm gonna add some grapeseed oil, just enough to cover the bottom. Uh, make sure you put your fan on because this will smoke. Uh, make sure it's nice and heated and then we're gonna get some color on these babies. You wanna hear and see a sizzle when you cook oh, In this bowl, I've got some uh, marin and some soy sauce, which is the low sodium. I'm gonna put a little bit of water, about two cups right now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a cup of sugar, or is that a half a cup? Mm -hmm. I'll put the measurements down for you guys later. That was some ginger. That was about uh, an inch and a half worth of ginger that I sliced up into uh, like coins, I guess. And that was garlic that was just smashed with the edge of the knife. And these are the whites of my scallions. The greens I'm gonna save for garnish. You'll see that later. Uh, and then this is gonna cook for a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at the ribs that we just put in. Uh, I got some good color on there and that's really all we're looking for. No, the color doesn't steal any juices or anything like that. All it does is add flavor, tons and tons of flavor to whatever you're cooking. Okay, so I finished searing all the uh, short ribs and there's all that fondant there, which is flavor, all this stuff that's stuck on the bottom. We're gonna get that off with the soy sauce mixture, which is right here waiting. And I have about half the water outside of it. And the reason I do that is so that I can rinse out whatever sugar residue might be in here to go back into the pot. But I just wanted to show you, this is the kind of color you're looking for. That is the flavor that you want when you're searing these babies. Okay, so uh, here we go gonna go with this first and like I said I will pour the rest of the water in here just to rinse everything out I happen to have whisked the heck out of that mixture so there wasn't much sugar residue left in there which is okay now what I'm going to do is uh, put the short ribs in there too um, and so a little bit of a simmer because that's gonna help scrape all that font that's on the bottom, all that flavor that's stuck on little beefy bits that were there, that's gonna help loosen that up. So I'm looking to do that and then I'll feel no, no resistance. Like right now, as I move my wooden spoon, I can feel the resistance of that stuck on food that I'm trying to get off, which is gonna add a lot of flavor to the sauce. Okay, the mixture is just coming up to a uh, simmer right now and I don't feel any resistance all the bits have been scraped off the bottom it's time to start adding the short ribs and I like to put them on their side only because I'll be able to fit more of them in here in one layer so that's what I'm going to do and then I'm gonna let them simmer for a little while uh, because there'll be like some scum that comes up to the top you want to scoop that off and then it goes into an oven 300 degrees for three hours and they will be tender and delicious. Okay, so uh, I've skimmed off all the residue that came up. Uh, everything looks nice and clean. It's come to a simmer. You can obviously see that not all the ribs fit in there. That's okay because once we put the lid on, steam's gonna work in there and it is going to cook those just the same. 300 degrees, three hours, we'll have some yummies. Bacon polenta. I've got uh, one Maggie cube in there. I'll bust it up with four cups of water. And that's gonna go in there. One cup of cornmeal and or polenta. And I've got about a teaspoon of salt. And then I'm gonna whisk, whisk, whisk until this starts to thicken. Okay, so it's uh, come to a simmer. It's thickened up nicely. I've been stirring maybe every five minutes for about 30 seconds and stopping, letting it cook on, on low now. Uh, gonna add some Parmesan Reggiano. It's about a half a cup, give or take, I won't tell. And I'm gonna cook this for about another five minutes and then add the butter. Okay, you can see the consistency now. It's kind of pretty thick, like mashed potatoes almost. Uh, I'm gonna start adding the butter. This is two tablespoons of cold cut up butter, which is not coming out of the thing of the I got 20 
Anyway, uh, gonna whisk this in and this is done. Three hours later, this is what we have. Now what we need to do is take the uh, ribs out and then strain it and get the fat out of there too. And then move on to making the sauce. I'll show you how to For the ribs, uh, what I did is I took the bones off and then there's little uh, connective tissue that that's next to the bone that's really chewy. Cut that out, got rid of it. Uh, strained out the liquid and uh, I also removed as much fat, skimmed off as much fat as I could. Now I'm putting in a slurry, a uh, corn, starch, and water slurry, which is gonna thicken this up. By the time it boils, it'll be like a nice thick glaze. And once that happens, we will put the uh, uh, short ribs back in here to glaze. Okay. Uh, it's come up to a simmer, and you can see it's tightened up just a little bit. It's a little bit thicker than what it was. It used to be like water. Uh, we can render this down, or reduce it down, I should say, uh, for another 15 minutes, but I'm not gonna bother because I'm starving. I'm gonna start adding my uh, deboned short ribs into the sauce, or glaze, if you will. Once they're in here, I'm gonna spoon the sauce over so at this point. You want to start taking that sauce and just drizzling it over all these short ribs just like this. Getting that sauce juice pasted all over these delicious ribs. And then we're going to serve these over some warm polenta and everyone will be happy. Polenta is done just in time, nice and creamy, very tender plate right here, put some in the middle of the plate, just like this, a little bit more for me because I really like this stuff, I'm going to spread it out just ever so slightly, and then I'm going to take one of the short ribs, put it right on top, let the sauce frizzle everywhere because it's really good. And then what I'm going to do is spoon some more of the glaze right over it. By the way, this glaze will thicken as it cools, so you can wait until then. I'm not because I'm starving. And put some green onion or scallion for garnish, and a little bit of sesame seeds. Toasted sesame seeds. There it is.